I'm Alex and welcome to my channel, The Mini War Geek. Today I have something very exciting for you. A good friend of mine came over with his elves to battle my vampires. And you know how sometimes have this very one-sided battle where you know almost from the beginning who's gonna win. And sometimes you have the thrilling games where nobody knows who's gonna win until the last die. And sometimes you have the very strange games where all the weird stuff seems to happen at once. And sometimes you just can't get your dice to behave. Well, this match, uh, all of those things happened. Let's just jump straight in, shall we? We are playing a game of Capture the Flags today. That means that the one who kills the most of the opponent's scoring units is the winner of the secondary objective. You can find the full army list in the description of the video. But let's just quickly go through them together. The Sylvan army from the left, a forest eagle, 26 dryads with heroes, a dryad ancient, it's a druidism adept who knows the master of earth and summer growth. And then we have a toxic spore, 17 sylvan archers, tree father ancient, that's the general, knowing the spells scrying, the stars align, unerring strike and fates judgments. 17 more archers, 6 thicket beasts and a thicket shepherd. That's the battle standard bearer, a forest eagle, 26 more dryads, a tree father, and scouting, 10 pathfinders. Let me present to you my vampire covenant army. From the left, a Valkolak, 5 vampire knights, 8 dire wolves, 26 zombies, a dark coach, a vampire count on a dragon. It knows the spells Arise and Pentagram of Pain. 26 more zombies, 40 skeletons, 28 barrel guards with great weapon, the master necromancer, knowing the spells spectral blades, arise, touch of the reaper and dance macabre, bat swarms, 8 more die wolves and 26 more zombies. We alternated for a while deploying units one by one until the elves had enough and dropped all their remaining ones, going for first turn. So the elves are going to start. The Pathfinder scout on the right side, at the edge of the board, lining up to shoot at the Varkolak or the Vampire Knights. The uh, Varkolak and the Direwolves vanguard up to face them head on. I'm counting on the Varkolak's mighty resistance of 5 and a 4 up fortitude save here, and isn't too worried. The Wolves on the left vanguards up a bit. Elves turn 1. No charges. The Pathfinders shy away from the Varkolak, getting as far as they can away from it. Half of them are still within short range for the strength 4 shots. Everything else moves up a bit. The Dryads sneakily hides behind the ruin. Oaken Throne is cast, but it's dispelled. Fate's Judgment is cast, but it's also dispelled. A Naming Strike is then failed to cast. The Pathfinders shoot at the Varkulak and makes 4 wounds. A 4 up 42 save and it's dead. Yeah. That's an amazing save throw by me there. But wait, it's followed by more amazing dice. 2 times 17 Sylvan Archers take aim and kill 4 Die Wolves. Most impressive. Vampires, turn 1. No charges. Everything moves up and the Wolves on the left blocks the Dryads. Pentagram of Pain is cast on the Pathfinders, but it's dispelled. But Touch of the Reaper does one wound on the Tree Father Ancient, so that's at least something. Elves turn 2. The Dryad charges the Diewolves and the Eagle charges the Bat Swarms, but fails the charge. The Pathfinders fails their march tests and only scooch sideways, not leaving any room for a charge from the Vampire Knights. As they are faster than the Wolves, they are not particularly afraid of being charged by them alone. The Ancient One moves closer, clearly having its eye on something, and the Thicket Beasts shuffle off to the right. Fate's Judgment does 5 wounds on the Dark Coach. That's 5 wounds with no special saves allowed. No worries, the Coach has a 3 up armor save. And that's another brilliant save bro. That's 4 wounds. It only has 1 left now. Oaken Throne does not go off. And then Unerring Strike is cast on the Coach to kill it off. But it's dispelled. The Pathfinders uses their AP3 arrows to shoot the Vampire Knights. They make 3 wounds. 4 up armor save this time and no, 17 archers will try to take the last health point of that dark coach, but they do nothing. The other 17 will try to kill some pesky bats, 
but they only do one wound. The Dryads shows a magic trick. They're going to make these wolves disappear. Vampires, turn two. No charges. This photo is very unfocused for some reason, but you get the gist of it. The bats are annoying, and the zombies does some shuffling to the left. The skeletons are moving up, and the coach runs home to the necromancer. On the eastern front, the wolves reform to make room for the dragon. The zombies and the vampire knights moves up. Pentagram of Pain is cast but only makes one wound. Arise is cast on the Vampire Knights to restore one wound, and as it is replicable, the Necromancer cast Arise on the coach, and it recovers two wounds, with the Gates of the Netherworld special rune. All in all, a pretty solid magic phase. In the shooting phase, the dragon uses its very bad breath, and does 7 out of 8 wounds on a 4 up wound roll. The dice in this game so far has been very weird. The remaining Pathfinders pass their panic test. Sylvan, turn 3. The Tree Father charges the wolves. The remaining Pathfinders also charge to make the Tree Father able to line up for a possible overrun into the knights. The Dryad charges the bats. And the eagle blocks the zombies from flanking. The thicket beasts are moving up a bit, but the dryad to the right is still sneaking behind the ruin, waiting for the moment. Scrying is cast on the dryads, and then fate's judgment is cast on the dark coach. But I will have none of that and dispels it. Unerring strike makes one wound, but it's saved. The archers shoot at the coach again, but it saves everything now, instead of nothing. On a 4 up armor save. The other 17 archers shoot at it, but they don't even wound it. The Dryads blast through another puny roadblock and is now tired of getting nowhere, and chooses to overrun. 8 inches. Having scrying on them, my opponent is not worried of getting counter charge, but 8 inches might be too far, we'll see. The Pathfinders find their swords and kill 4 wolves. The wolves kill one Pathfinder, and then the trace destroys them. It then overruns but only get a 5, but that's exactly what it needed and it charges into the knights. The zombies charges the eagle, but as it no longer needs to protect anyone else, it protects itself by leaving, and flees 12 inches. And then of course, this happens. The dryads got a little bit too far on its overrun and the skeletons got to it in its flank rather than in front, opening up the charge from the dark coach as well. Will Scrying help them now? With the dice we have been seeing so far, who knows? The dragon charges the eagle on the right and the zombies moves up. The zombies on the left ended up needing a roll of 8 to successfully charge the eagle, but rolled a 7 and moved up 6 inches. Some more blurry photos here, but the necromancer costs a rise again on the coach, getting it back on full health, and the vampire lord got one off on the knights, getting one back and then Spectral Blade is dispelled. The Vampire Lord also knows the magic trick the Dryads showed earlier. It then discovers the sneaking Dryads behind the ruins. The Knight does three wounds on the Tree Father and loses one in return. They win the fight, but the tree is stubborn and stays where it is. The impact hits from the Dark Coach kills two Dryads, then the Vampire on the Dark Coach kills a few. The Dryads then makes ten wounds in total, 4 on the skeletons and 6 on the barrow gods. I don't think that's good enough. Will that be good enough? They do have scrying on them, after all. The skeletons, and more interestingly, the barrow god strikes back. And when the dust had settled and we had counted the battle score, we found out that no, it was not enough. The dryad loses 10 to 20, and they automatically flee. The coach and the skellies are in pursuit, the dryads rolls a solid 8. The coach, with his swift stride, rolls 7 in total, but the skellies roll a hefty 11 and not only captures the fleeing dryads, but also overruns into the arches on the hill. Awesome. Elves turn 4. The thicket beast charges the far zombies and the dryads charges the other zombies. The archers charges the skeleton in the flank and helping their brothers. One dryad is lost in the ruin and I think one wound on a thicket beast, but both charges are otherwise successful. 
the eagle rallies and the ancient turns to look to the left, no doubt still after the coach. Some uh, ominous measuring, that's a phrase I coined uh, and we use it in my gaming group to describe the practice of measuring distances on the board without telling anyone why and appearing to have a nasty plan that may or may not be a bluff. In this case I think my opponent is measuring to make sure his spells are in range. As we move on to magic the stars align is cast on the thicket beasts. I then think I dispelled another judgement on the coach because I had no dice left to dispel this awesome cast of scrying on the tree father. 665. The elf kills four skeletons and the skeleton kills two elves making a tie. And the elves reform. The dryad slays seven zombies and loses one. The zombies crumbles a bit and there we are. With scrying out the knights does nothing on the tree father and it makes some wounds back. The knights loses combat and crumbles to more wounds. The thicket beasts erases the zombies. I think they kill like 16 or so winning with about 17 points and the remaining zombies just crumble. Vampires turn 4, the zombies charges the archers to help, and the barrow guards charges the ancient. They both need a roll of 9, and the zombies makes it on a roll of 10, and the barrow guard makes it on a roll of 11. The dice, uh, this game, um, the coach and the dragon moves into position for whatever is going to happen next. What do you think will happen next? How do you think the game will end? We are at this point at my turn 4, I have just made those two charges and let's do some magic. The master necromancer tries to raise zombies to block the thicket beast, but it's dispelled. The vampire lord causes a rise on the vampire knights, healing one. The necromancer then casts a rise in the big aura. My opponent tries to dispel it, but is not successful. And it goes off healing pretty much everything. He then casts spectral blades on the barrow guards, giving them a reroll to their wound rolls. My opponent once again tries to dispel, but I win with one little dot on the dice. And get that one too. And to sum up the racing, I get 5 barrow guards, 9 skeletons and 9 zombies back. The elves kill 5 skeletons and 1 zombie, but they lose way too many. Loses the combat, flees and are run down by the skeletons. You can see them running like hell again in the background there. Rolling a 10 on its pursuit move. The Ancient kills two Barrow Guards, the Champion being one of them. The Barrow Guards then strikes back and rolls very good. Making 11 hits out of 15 attacks, but the Ancient still has a resistance of 6. So it's a 4 up, 2 wound roll with 3 rolls. And I roll, and you probably won't believe this, they all wound. Oh actually, 10 wounds, the last one I made with the reroll. The Ancient has a 5 up AD save, but it's Bye bye big tree. The dryads make a lot of wounds on the zombies and this is what it looks like after the crumbling. The knights make one more wound on the tree father but are then killed. Anything could still happen in this game. Sylvan turn 5. The thicket beast charges the barrow guard but fail and the tree father together with the last pathfinders hides in the far right to deny points. No magic, but the archer and the tree father shoots the dragon and makes one wound and the dryads finally kills the zombies. Vampires turn 5, the barrow guard and the black coat charges the thicket beasts and the vampire lord charges the dryads in the flank. The skeletons and the zombies move closer. Magic does nothing interesting and then the vampire lord slays the dryad champion. The vampire wins the combat, but the dryads are of course steadfast. They pass their break test and reforms to face their enemy. But it's okay, all I needed was holding them in place until the skeletons get here. And then this massive fight starts. Okay, so we're gonna keep score here. The undead can potentially score 40 points if everything goes perfectly. The thicket beasts can only score 25. So let's see how it goes. They each has two points right now. The undead have a charge and a banner. And the bushes have of course a banner and a rank. Impact hits from the coach. It's a roll of one. Of course it is. But it's plus one so two hits but no wounds. The vampire on the coach hits his mighty offensive six and four attacks makes zero hits. The necromancer is dueling the thicket shepherd and he 
hits his one attack, but it doesn't wound, of course. The Thicket Shepherd does three wounds, counting the stomp, but I save two, making one. And that's the roll you can see here. So it's now two against three. Thicket Beast's 16 attacks makes 12 hits and then wounds nine of those. That's nine dead barrel guards. The Thicket Beast also makes their stomps, because why not? And they make another two wounds. And the score now is two versus 14. That will probably be hard to beat, but let's give it a go. The horses from the coach hits one, but doesn't wound. The Wraith Coachman, with his strength 5 and arm um, penetration 10, doesn't hit anything. The Barrow God hit 9, but only wounds 5. And the Thicket Beast save one of those. So that's 6 combat points for me and 14 for my opponent. That of course makes my trusted Dark Coach to crumble 8 wounds and die. And in the confusion of the unexpected, at least size of my loss here, I forgot that my Barrow Guards are Bodyguard and removed 8 instead of 4 from the crumbling. Elves turn 6. Certain death. Small chance of success. What are we waiting for? Heroic charge from the eagle and maybe, only maybe, can it hold the skeletons in place. One turn is the only thing it needs to stop them from charging the dryads. It makes the charge. The Vampire Lord kills 8 dryads, taking no wounds. The dryad fails their break test, but we roll because of the battle standard bearer and rolls a 2. And sticks are up. The heroic eagle kills 2 skeletons and is unharmed. It loses combat, but makes its discipline test with a roll of 6, and have succeeded with its unlikely mission. The Shepherd then kills the Necromancer, and the rest of the Thicket Base kills the remaining Barrowgods. Even if I had remembered Bodyguard, there would only be 3 left, who would tumble anyway, at best giving me 3 wounds on a Thicket Base, maybe killing one more for no difference point-wise. The last turn. The Zombies charges the pesky meddling bird, and we move on to Magic. I had nothing to cast but a rise, so I did it because why not? Rolling 4 dice and miscasting on 5s. That's 10 skeletons and 10 zombies back. The vampire lord also took one wound from the miscast effect, but it's the wound he already had lost that he got back from the spell that he then lost again. So he's still on 5 wounds, same as before. It's combat and I have a chance of doing something sneaky here. If I don't kill the bird, only make him flee, I can make him flee from the zombies and pursue with the skeletons and overrun into the dryads, getting to charge them anyway. The eagle kills one zombie and then the skeleton makes two wounds on the bird. Ah! It only has one left now! Can the zombies do the one thing they are meant to do, which is nothing? No, they make one wound and the bird dies. No pursue move for me. The vampire lord can still do it by himself just 15 dryads left, 11 dead and they are not steadfast anymore. The vampire and the dragon have the potential of making 23 wounds, if the stars align, so 11 seems doable. The vampire's 6 attacks hits on 2 up, but misses 2, wounds on a 3 up and wounds 3, but 1 is saved. 2 more attacks from Crimson Rage and 2 hits, and wounds, and no saves. That's 4 in total, not great, but we still have the dragon's attacks and stomp. The dryads are first, and getting 5 hits, but doesn't wound any of them. The dragon have 5 attacks, and it's hitting on 4 up. 2 hits. It's 2 up, 2 wound, and yes, both of them. That's 6 dead dryads, 5 more, still doable. But alas, the stomp only kills 3, for a total of 9 dead dryads. That's two short of the targeted 11, and the Dryads are once again steadfast. Okay, so we know this game is going to be extremely close, but how close? If we would assume the Dryads make their final discipline test, the standing is 3601 for the Vampire Covenant and 3610 for the Sylvan Elves. That's a difference of only 9 points. With the secondary objective that is 13 to 7 for the Elves. But what if they fail and flee, and the dragon captures them? Four each for the secondary. The end score would be nearly 11 to 10 to the vampires, but still 10 each. Did the dryads make the roll? Before I tell you what happened, 
I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching and have a good one. And please remember to like and subscribe the video. See you soon. Okay, Discipline 8 with a reroll from the BSB. Yes, of course they made it. Fuck steadfast.